This is our second video of how to use laser gerbil. In this video, we're going to go over how to create an engraving and how to start our engraving. First thing we need to do is connect our machine. I went over that in the first video. My machine is connected. I can move the head around. Okay. So now I need to open up an image. I can also open up SVGs and G code itself, but typically what I open up is images. Any image will work. I will find one on my computer here. So you can either go to a file, open file, or there's a check mark right here. It does the same thing. If I hover over this, you can read that it says, also says open file. I want to click this and here I have a window. I want to find a good laserable file here. This one's just black and white. This one's going to be really easy to engrave. I will go over grayscale in another video, but black and white, super easy. Here we go. This is one of my favorites to engrave. So select this, open it. Now it's going to bring up another dialog. There's a lot of options here in this program. So the main ones here, we have line to line tracing. That means it's going to go line to line, turning on the laser to engrave it back and forth, right? Right now I have it set to horizontal. We'll go over that more in a little bit. So that means it's going to go left, start from the left side and go to the right side. And then once it's done with that line, it's going to come up a little bit and go from the right side to the left side, engraving back and forth, right? Turning on whenever there's a dark line, turning off when there's white space, okay? The next option we have is one bit dithering. This is really cool for uh, making grayscale images on difficult pieces. So the darker it is, the more dots there are. The lighter it is, the less dots there are. So what it's gonna do, is just going to generate a ton of little dots here. It's still going to go left to right, but instead of doing lines, it's going to do dots, okay? So in a grayscale image, if I were on line to line, it would go at a certain speed, but if the image was lighter there, it would turn the laser on on a lesser power, so it wouldn't engrave as dark. So when I do line to line to get grayscale, it's going to modify the power of the laser as it goes back and forth, to get a grayscale image. That way you get not as dark, dark, lighter, etc. lines going across. When I do one bit dithering, what it's gonna do is find dark spots and put a lot of dots there. It's gonna find light spots and put very few dots there. Okay, so it's still gonna go back and forth, but instead of varying the power of the laser, it's varying the amount of dots in the area. Next one is vectorize. What that does, it finds the edges, wherever it goes from dark to light. So as you can see, it found out all the edges, okay? All the red lines here are the lines it's going to engrave. So instead of going left and right and left and right, it's going to go to a line and follow it. So it's going to engrave this line itself. And the last one, I've never used it. But it's cool that this program has it as center line. It's going to try to find the center of every single line. So all these red lines are guesses of where the centers of all these lines are. It doesn't do a bad job, but I still don't fully understand the practicality of this function. For this one, we're going to stick with line-to-line -line tracing. Okay. So here's, here's our image here. Up here, I can look at the preview of what I'm going to laser versus the original of what I uploaded or what I loaded up, what I opened. So I've got a few options here. With this being black and white, it really doesn't matter. Brightness, contrast, really doesn't matter. This is going to be a simple, just black and white image. In fact, to get the best, op to get the best engraving here, I'm going to choose a black and white option. What that's going to do is make sure the laser is either off in this white space or on in this dark space. That's it. 
Okay. So with my laser, I'm going to do 10 lines per millimeter. I have a 500 milliwatt UV laser. Okay. Any laser from about 300 milliwatts to 1,000 milliwatts can go up to about 15 lines per millimeter without crossing over to the next one. If I did way too many lines per millimeter, they'd start to overlap. I'd be redarkening already darkened lines, and it would not come out accurately. If I do too few, like it, let's say I did like two lines per millimeter, well, there's going to be a bunch of gap in there, okay? So that means there's going to be line and then just open wood or open granite or whatever you're engraving, and then another line. It's not going to look accurate. It's not going to look full. So I'm using a 500 milliwatt UV. If you're using like a one and a half watt to three watt diode engraver, you're going to want to go eight to 10 lines per millimeter. Okay, that's a little bit bigger of a dot. It can't get like that small. When you increase the power, the diode inside, the gap has to increase. And therefore, it's harder to get that small dot with those. Now, when you get up to 7 to 15 watt diodes, those ones are going to be even bigger. You're going to go 5 to 10 millimeters, depending on the quality of the laser and how well you can focus it. Okay. Now, I've got a 500 milliwatt, so I'm going to use 10 lines per millimeter. I've also got it well focused. Now, down here, I can modify this image if I'd like. I can rotate the image. I can rotate it back. I can flip it. I can flip it this way. So if I'm doing a mirror, chances are I'm engraving the back side of the mirror. So I'm going to want to flip it, especially if there's text. <laughs> An image like this doesn't matter as much. But if I have writing all over it and I flip the mirror back around when it's done, it's going to look silly, right? I also have this uh, crop image tool. I can click this and I can just grab the face here, right? I can undo everything I've done also with this one. And then this button right here does an auto trim. What it does is finds the edges. This one's pretty close to the edge, so it's not going to pull off much. It might pull a little off the bottom. I'll hit it here to show you. So you see how there's no more edge on the bottom here? It comes all the way to the side, etc. I can also undo that. Now if I'm doing something like a granite slab and I'm engraving on top of it, when you engrave granite, it oxidizes the surface, making it lighter, not darker. So if I'm engraving wood, it's charring the wood, right? That wood is now darker where the laser hit. When it hits granite, it gets lighter. So really, granite starts out dark, and you're lasering the light spots. If you're doing that, this tool right here is perfect. It's called Invert Color. So now, it's going to engrave everything but what needs to be left. Anyways, I'm going to undo all this stuff. And once I've got my image set up, my brightness, my contrast, the type of engraving I want to do, the density or quality of our engraving, I can also change my direction. I guess I should go over that too. So my machine here, if you look at the head, when it's moving left and right, all it's moving is the head, okay? Nothing else. When it's moving up and down, it's got to move the head, the arm here, or the gantry, whatever you'd like to call it, the end stop, the head motor. This whole assembly has to move up and down, okay? So, if I do a vertical engraving, that means it's going to go up and down. It's going to go up, engrave, move a tiny bit over, go down, move a tiny bit over, go up. The problem with that is there's a lot of weight to move up and down every time. All this white space, what it's going to try to do is skip it as fast as it can. So if it's going left to right and it's doing this shoe right here and it's done with this part right here, it's going to jump over here as fast as possible and then start running this shoe here. The cool thing about going left to right with this machine is it can move. It can snap this head very fast over to that point, right? 
the more the laser is running, the more the laser is actually on, the more productive you are, the less time this will actually take, okay? So I want to make sure that the laser is actually engraving and not just moving around to its next engrave. I want to make sure it's actually on and running. So what I'm going to do on my machine is make sure it's at horizontal. Now, if you have a 3018, uh, 1618, one of those eBay uh, mill conversions, you might want to select hor or diagonal. And that's because those things move incredibly slow. They're not actually optimized for lasers. It's common to add a laser to those, but those are optimized for milling, not lasering. And so the best speed you can get out of there is going diagonal because now you're moving horizontal and vertical at the same time. But my machine is optimized for lasers. It's got a gantry on the horizontal axis, so I'm gonna keep with horizontal, okay? So once I got this, I got my brightness, my contrast set up. I'm doing line to line tracing. My image looks good here. My quality is set up. I'm gonna hit next. And it's going to bring up one more dialogue. This one is a tough one. This one depends very much on the type of wood you're using, the type of laser you have. Okay? So, this is a very weak laser. So I can't go super fast with it. If I had one of my 20 watt diodes on here, I could go about four to 5,000 millimeters a minute. Okay? Now, right now I have... A UV diode. It's not very powerful, but it's got such high quality that I love using it. But I'm going to have to go a lot slower. I'm going to go 1200 for the wood I'm using. So this will be the wood I'm using. I've already done some engravings on it. This exact one, actually. This is called Aromatic Cedar. I like it because it has lots of personality. Lots of little, like, blonde streaks, red streaks. Just a lot of detail to it. This is what a finished product looks like in it. This one's oiled. It's, this is a artwork by somebody on Instagram, at DTSN Doodles. There's a lot of really neat art there, and they actually sent me some of their files so I could engrave it on wood. Really cool stuff. But this is what it looks like finished here. Really nice looking. Here are them together. The oiled one's up top. The one I'm about to engrave is on bottom. So what I'm going to do here is throw my piece of wood in my laser. And you might not have a lid. I have a lid. <laughs> I'm going to close my lid up. Okay. So with this type of wood... I'm going to do 1200 speed here, okay? If I were using a lighter wood or a harder to burn wood, I would have to move that laser slower. The slower the laser moves, the more energy it can put into the wood, the darker it can get the wood. It's difficult to get grayscale with line to line tracing on some things because once the laser actually darkens the wood a little bit, that wood, now that it's a little bit darker, absorbs the laser a lot easier. Light wood doesn't absorb the laser very well. Dark wood absorbs the laser very well. Once it gets darkened even a little bit by the laser itself, it will now absorb more laser faster. Okay? So if I'm using a 15-watt diode, I'm going to have a really hard time getting grayscale because it's going to go from not engraved at all to instantly dark. And it's going to be really hard to get anywhere in between. It's going to be a lot of tuning. This half watt diode is a very fine point and a lot weaker. It takes a little bit longer for it to actually get the wood super dark. So I have a lot more forgiveness there. I have a lot more playroom to get a nice grayscale images on wood. Okay, so with this wood right here, I'm going to do 1200 speed. 
S min. So if my laser's moving at 1200 speed, the laser has to be on a certain amount of power for it to even engrave, right? Like I can turn that laser down so low that it won't actually even leave a mark. S min tries to fix that. It tries to find the minimum amount that it's actually going to start leaving marks. There's a lot of tuning be behind that, and if you would like, I can make another video on figuring that out. S-Max, that's the maximum power command for your laser. And I'll show you how to do how to check that in just a second here. Okay? My S-Max is 255. Yours will probably probably be 255 or 1000 depending on how you set your machine up. And then one of the easier parts, how big you want this engraving. They also recently added a centering tool, which I think is really cool. Because instead of having your image laser from the lower left, you can center the image on your machine and center the laser over it, and it will engrave. Anyways, so if I want this about 4 inches tall, that's 100 millimeters, I would type in 100. If I want it 2 inches tall, that's about 50 millimeters, type in 50, you'll see the width follows along with it. It keeps the aspect ratio for you, right? If I want to auto size it at 10 lines per millimeter, that's exactly 254 pixels per inch or dots per inch. So if I want the exact resolution of my drawing to go onto this piece of wood, I can hit auto size and type in 254, and I would get the exact resolution of the image onto the wood, which would ha then have to be 175 millimeters tall, or about 7 inches tall. Anyways, I'm going to turn off auto size. I just want it 100 millimeters tall. I'm going to hit create. Okay. So two things happened here. One thing is it created the file, the, the G-code file. If I look in the lower left, this file is 12,774 12, lines long. It estimates to take around 13 minutes. <coughs> Once I hit play, it's going to get a better estimate. But a dry estimate right now is 13 minutes. Okay. Up here will be my progress once it starts. So once I hit OK, it generated the G code. And then it generated a preview here, this image right here behind the video of, of my machine. It generated, generated this preview. It might take a while, a long while, to generate the preview. I did something very small here. I've got a machine that is two feet by four feet that I can do the same resolution. It's got a CO2 mirror assembly and it's got a half watt diode. So when I do half watt diode pictures on there, it can take up to 20 minutes to actually generate a preview. Even though it generated the G code and I can move the machine around, it's not going to show anything here. That's because it's still generating the preview. So you can still move the machine around and bring it back to where you want to start lasering. So now that I have an image set up, I can put my head exactly where I want it. Oh, that's right. I moved this manually. I'm going to have to rehome my machine. Not all machines have homing cycles. You might just be able to move it around. But I literally grabbed the head and moved it. All right, I want to move it 50 millimeters to the right. And maybe another 50. We'll put it right there. Sure, right in the middle. Once I have the head where I want it, I have to make sure to set zero. If I were to hit play right now, it's going to move back to where it started. So this head of the machine will move back to where it was after I homed it and start engraving from there because it thinks that's the zero point of my engraving. Right here, this pin is where we set a zero point. I click that, and now 
where the head that head is at is now the new zero point. So if I look on here, this shows it to be 100 millimeters tall by 55 millimeters wide. From where the head is at, it's going to move over along this dashed line and go to this dark spot and start engraving. Everywhere where there's a dashed line, that's a move over it as fast as you can. Everywhere there's a dark line, that's a, you know, go slower and actually engrave this line. Okay, so I got my zero set. I got my file set up. I'm connected. I'm talking. And then I hit play. And now it's just going back and forth. You can see the cursor here, this purple cursor, following about where the laser's at. You see it snapping back and forth, left and right here. So this video, at this point, is over. I'm going to let it run and eventually pull it out. But there's going to be no new information. You can just watch a laser engrave happening now. <laughs> Thank you.
And there we have an engraving.